Handsome Jack is not the villain of the Borderlands series. That's right, today I'm going to prove that Handsome Jack is not quite as evil as we initially thought. My name is Cheesy and let's just jump in. Firstly, I want to bring up his life story if you will. We know from a quest in Borderlands 2 that Handsome Jack, also known as John, was viciously abused as a kid by his grandmother. This undoubtedly leads to intense trauma, yet Jack goes on to get a tech job at Hyperion, get married, and have a kid. There is undeniable evidence throughout the entire second half of Borderlands 2 and in echo recordings from Borderlands 3 that he loved his family. This is really important because he manages to put his violent past behind him and be a loving husband and father. Of course, this relationship changes when a bandit kidnaps Angel and, in a fit of fear, she activates a turret that kills Bandit and her mother. See, Angel was a siren that eventually put her whole family at risk because they didn't understand her powers. And so, to prevent further danger, danger to Angel and the people around her, he restrained her to control poor Angel. Now while this seems harsh, you have to remember that he just saw his wife be killed through his daughter's actions. I'm not sure what he should have done, but I can understand being afraid because her and her abilities are just a big unknown. This sets up the scene for Borderlands 1, where Jack comes up with a plan to manipulate the Vault Hunters and claim the Vault for himself. In Borderlands 1, you, the player, play as four possible characters, Roland, Brick, Mordecai, and Lilith. They are contacted and guided through the game by Angel and by extension Jack. The primary antagonist is technically Commandant Steel from Atlas Corps, but they really don't have much of a presence throughout the game. Both Atlas and the Vault Hunters, however, want what's inside the vault, and they'll do whatever they need to to get it. Jack, being the cunning man he was, figured he'd let them do the work, and then take the power of the vault for himself. See, a lot of people have a negative impression of this, and think he's evil, or at least at the very least bad for doing this. But you have to keep in mind, there's really not any rules for vault hunting. I mean, you play as a mercenary, and you do horrendous things throughout the game, so Jack sitting it out till the end doesn't really seem like a big deal to me. Regardless, his plans are changed somewhat when the vault hunters actually manage to defeat the destroyer. So instead, he opts to take the eye of the destroyer, which considering the massive firepower it possesses, he thought it'd be a good deterrent. He was wrong. Borderlands, a pre-sequel, is where a lot of the evidence really shines. Jack finds out about a vault on Elpis and hires a group of vault hunters, whom you play, to help him find it. It doesn't go well because the Lost Legion attacks and occupies Helios, while Jack and his, his, Jack and his gang are eventually exiled to Elpis. The game then becomes a race against time as the Lost Legion seeks to destroy Elpis with a very laser that Jack thought would bring about peace. The pre-sequel shows a very different Jack from the one we were first introduced to in Borderlands 2. This Jack is saw on stopping a laser and saving the people of Elpis. Throughout the story, you see time and time again that he gets betrayed by someone he trusts. The Merith, Moxie, and Lilith are the worst offenders. This is significant because of several reasons. Firstly, it brings a trauma from his past, wherein he was abused by someone he was meant to trust, i.e. his grandmother. Secondly, it changes his perspective of the people of Pandora and Elpis. He begins to see them less as people that need saving and more as bandits. And thirdly, he loses a naivety he used to hold and begins to be more cruel and brutal. This reaches a pinnacle when Jack is betrayed by Lilith at the end of the pre-sequel, thus scarring Jack and leaving him mad with anger. Through all of this, Jack was the victim. He set out to save Elpis and all that did for him was get him stabbed in the back, repeatedly. At the end, he has had a total paradigm shift and becomes almost a new person entirely, an alter ego, so to speak. The beginning of Handsome Jack. And this is what leads me to the juicy part of the video. See, I never said that Jack is the hero, necessarily. I think in pre-sequel, he is indisputably a hero, but in Borderlands 2, that isn't quite the case. See, his motives in Borderlands 2 were to make Pandora a livable planet, bring order and security to the new residents he brings, and, oh yeah, kill all bandits on Pandora. Well, okay, that last one sounds a little bit bad, doesn't it? Although, come to think of it, the Vault Hunters you play as seem to have no qualms with murdering a prolific amount of bandits either. A bit weird when you look at it like that. I don't think that killing every bandit is necessarily a bad thing. I it becomes bad when you call nearly every resident of Pandora a bandit. 
He sees everybody is a bandit because Lilith and Roland seemingly prove to him that the people down there are barbaric and evil. Will the Jack from the beginning of the pre-sequel have a problem with Borderlands 2 Jack and his plans? I would say definitely. See, Borderlands 2 Jack's plans were almost a reverse of pre-sequel Jack. And this just goes to show what a drastic character change he had throughout the games. And this is the thing. What makes someone a bandit begin with? Do they have to be insane? Do they have to commit crimes? Would mutilating and betraying someone be enough to say that Lilith and company are bandits after all? These are questions I don't really have answers to, but I have some points that are interesting. Firstly, at the end of the pre-sequel, despite disavowing Jack, Lilith calls for the execution of Athena. Points 2 and 3 I've already mentioned somewhat, but they're worth mentioning again. The second point is that the Vault Hunters kill so many people pretty indiscriminately. I mean, sure, they're shooting first generally, but by that logic, didn't Lilith technically shoot first too, then? And that's also part of the third point. Lilith, Moxie, and Roland stab Jack in the back because a crazy Zarpadon tells him to, and or because he has a big laser. I'll just say, I'm pretty sure in this universe, there are probably a great many lasers mounted to ships. So that's just a bad reason. And secondly, they listen to the woman who's trying to kill them on numerous occasions just because? It honestly makes very little sense to me. The final point I will make is that Jack genuinely believes that he is doing what he's doing for the good of the universe. Throughout Borderlands 2, he articulates it enough, and he straight up monologues about it at the very end while he's dying. Granted, many villains think they're doing the right thing, but when you take into account everything that I've brought into the light, it gets a little suspicious. Jack to his last breath, believes in what he's doing. Imagine if the tables are turned. That could just as easily be the Vault Hunters. Well, I suppose I'll wrap this up. In conclusion, Handsome Jack isn't the villain, but he's not quite the hero either. He does some bad things, and I cannot dispute that. But on the flip side, the Vault Hunters, both Legacy and New, also have done some awful things. Borderlands 2 is unique because it's not black and white. It is meant, it's very easy to see Jack as a villain because of our perspective in game and our agenda. I mean, Lilith literally has her own bandit clan. Like, come on. I would say that Lilith, objectively, is much more evil than Jack. But I digress. We see what happened when we won in Borderlands 2, and that's Borderlands 3, which is basically nothing. Pandora is more dangerous than ever. A new threat has arose that they can't quite deal with, at least at the beginning, and the whole galaxy is in conflict with Malawan and Atlas in conflict. If Jack had won, Pandora would probably be built up into quite, well, probably a dystopian society, but it would be safe and worth living in. I mean, heck, it'd probably be better than the direction America's heading. So, regardless, I think I've done a decent job at proving at the very least that Jack is not the explicit villain of the series. Leave some comments down below. I would love to see what you guys have to say and let me know if I missed some things. This is my perspective and I think it's okay to disagree about, about these sort of things because it's purely speculatory and it doesn't matter really at all in the grand scheme of things. It's just fun to speculate. So um, at any rate, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, I'd really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button. It's a small thing for you, but it means the world to me. My name is Cheesy, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye-bye.